Zechariah chapter number 9 and Ezekiel chapter number 26. Zechariah 9 and Ezekiel chapter number 26. Now we'll, we'll deal with some verses in 26, 27, 28, and 29, but uh, we're going we're gonna to be mostly in 26 tonight. Zechariah 9, and I'm just going to read the two verses here in Zechariah's prophecy. Verse 3 and 4 says, And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold, and heaped up silver as the dust, and fine gold as the mire of the streets. Think about that. That's a lot of treasure in it. I mean, when, it, when it's just like dust. Or just like the mire, you know, you, 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 you are overwhelmed with silver and gold. Verse 4, the, Behold, the Lord will cast her out. He will smite her power in the sea. She shall be devoured with fire. Let me remind you what we've seen thus far in Zechariah 9. In our first message from this chapter, we saw the prophecy against Hadrach, Damascus, and Hamath there in verse 1 and 2. Zechariah starts out with the burden of the word of the Lord, and we talked about how a burden is a threatening prediction, a pronouncement of judgment from God. In our second message from this chapter, we saw the judgment pronounced against Tyrus or Tyre and Sidon, and uh, three accusations for which the judgment would come. And it says, uh, uh, we saw, first of all, they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and, and uh, remembered not the brotherly covenant. When it, when it talks about they offered up the captivity of Israel to Eden, uh, Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant uh, in Amos 1.9. And we saw how Tyre saw herself as a rival of Jerusalem, the city of God. We saw that in Ezekiel 26, verse 2, and also Joel 3, verse 4 through 6. But we also saw the king of Tyre and his people were bursting with pride and arrogance, according to Ezekiel 28, verses 1 through 19. Now, the most compact word of judgment over Tyre is found in Ezekiel 26, chapters 26 through 28. And that's why we're looking at this in regard to what we just read there in Zechariah. Ezekiel 26 through 28 contains God's wrath upon Tyre because of its ill treatment of Israel and its attitude toward the destruction of Israel by the Chaldeans. When the Babylonians came in, the Chaldeans came in against Israel, carried them away in captivity. Uh, you could see Tyre on the side just applauding and cheering because uh, uh, that, that was their competition, as they saw it, being moved out of the way. They had a bad attitude. And... Ezekiel 26 through 28, it proclaims Tyre's judgment and the Lord's message concerning Tyre. It ends with these words. Look, look, let's look at the end there in Ezekiel 28, verse 25 and 26. And because this is important, this is a, kind of the summation of what we're looking at, why the Lord is even telling us about these things. Verse 25, Thus saith the Lord God, When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. In other words, God's not going to forget his people. He's going to remember them. In verse 26, And they shall dwell safely therein and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence when I have executed judgments upon all those, not just Tyre, but upon all those that despise them round about, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God. So what, what the Lord does to Tyre here in pronouncing a judgment and then fulfilling uh, that that he has pronounced it against them, uh, uh, fulfilling that judgment, it, it brings to mind that uh, God's not going to let uh, 
anybody get by with mistreating Israel. Um, understand that this prophecy against Tyre shows that the Lord did not lost sight of his people. And let me remind you that one day God will judge all the nations in accordance with their attitude uh, toward and their treatment of the nation of Israel. Now the nations that desire to harm Israel are going to be brought low one day. We actually uh, looked at two verses in, in Daniel 7, verse 18 and 27 that showed how the, the remnant of believing Jews, God's covenant people, are going to be exalted for all eternity. Um, they, they will, uh, the, the nations will be brought low, but it, Israel will be exalted. The Word of God stands as firm as a rock and will remain for all eternity. And the nations may grit their teeth and they may get all bent out of shape and allow their blood pressure to go uh, in places that have never been seen before. But it, it doesn't matter. The, the Lord, uh, all the enmity against God and His people are going to fail <laughs> according to His Word. And, you, and we can count on that. Now, a careful reading of uh, Ezekiel 26 and verses 1 through 14 explains that Tyre was a city in Lebanon that was situated on the Mediterranean Sea. And the city was well known as a uh, trade center. In fact, it was a bustling area being right there uh, on the Mediterranean. There were trade routes from southern Arabia to the Orient passed through Tyre. And both Isaiah and Ezekiel describe prophetically the complete downfall of Tyre while it was in its heyday. Now, we will see that this took place over a number of years. Understand, when God pronounces judgment, he may bring it swiftly, like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, just rain fire and brimstone down, or he may, he may do it in waves, like he's doing our nation right now. We, got, we have waves of storms, waves of tornadoes, waves of, of heat, waves of fires now. They're, they're fire busting all out over in the west right now. Um, it's the judgment of God. God's pouring out his judgment on our land. God's message of judgment to Tyre, though, we're going to see is found there in our text. Zechariah 9, verse 3 and 4, and then uh, the first part of the, of the message of, of the judgment to Tyre describes how the catastrophe comes over the city through the nations in these phases or waves, ever how you wanted to uh, determine that. Let's look at Ezekiel 26, and let's read uh, verse number 1 through 6. It says, And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, because that Tyrus has said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken, that was the gates of the people. She is turned unto me. I shall be replenished. Now she is laid waste. You get the attitude there that they had against Israel and rejoicing that Israel was... Was, had been brought low by the Chaldeans. Look at verse 3. Therefore, in other words, because of that attitude, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Tyrus, and will cause many nations, I want you to get that, it cause many nations to come up against thee, as the sea causeth his waves to come up. See, even God gives the picture of waves one wave after another. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyrus and break down her towers. And I will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. It shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And it shall become a spoil to the nations." And her daughters, which are in the field, shall be slain by the sword. They shall know that I am the Lord. They, that's important. I shall, they shall know that I am the Lord. In other words, when these judgments 
uh, are come to their full fruition. I mean, they, they should be getting the attitude as the first wave hits that the Lord is God and that he is, uh, he is one that's bringing this, but they don't. Um, but by the time that they are totally destroyed, they knew that the Lord spoke truth. Now, uh, the first part of this message there, in, we see, that, but the second part describes the attack by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar. And we'll give you a, a little more detail here in a minute regarding the history of what actually happened here. But the second part actually describes uh, Nebuchadnezzar's coming against him. Look at verse number 7. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring upon Tyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of kings from the north, with horses and with chariots and with horsemen and companies and much people. Let's pause right there a minute. The Lord brought Nebuchadnezzar against his people, just like he said he would. Yeah? And these nations are not going to get by either. And by the way, uh, Chaldeans didn't get by with mistreating Israel either. God eventually judged them. But, but here we see God, God tells Cyrus, I'm, I'm going to bring Nebuchadnezzar against you. Look at verse 8. He shall slay with a sword thy daughters in the field. He shall make a fort against thee, cast a mount against thee, lift up the buckler against thee. He shall set engines of war against thy walls. And with his axes he shall break down thy towers by reason of the abundance of his horses. Their dust shall cover thee. Thy walls shall, make, sh shall shake at the noise of the horsemen and of the wheels and of the chariots. Um, and he shall enter into thy gates as men enter to a city wherein is made a breach. With the hoofs of his horses shall he tread down all thy streets, and he shall slay thy people by the sword, and thy strong garrison shall go down to the ground. And then the third part uh, here in verses 12 through 14 describe the, the attack by Greece, which was later. There's an intervening attack that's not described here by the uh, Medes and the Persians. We'll get to that in just a minute. But Verses 12 through 14 took place during the time of uh, Alexander the Great. Look at verse 12. And they, okay, went back in, in verses 7 through uh, 11, he's talking about he, talking about Nebuchadnezzar, but the they here is speaking of, of uh, Greece. They shall make a, a spoil of thy riches and make a prey of thy merchandise. They shall break down thy walls and destroy thy pleasant houses, and they shall lay the, uh, thy stones and thy timber and thy dust in the midst of the water. This is important. Okay, I want you to think about this. They're going to lay the stones and the timber and the dust in the midst of the water. And I'll, I'll, re I'll recall this in here in just a minute. Verse 13, And I will cause the noise of thy songs to cease, and the sound of thy harp shall be no more heard, and I will make thee like the top of a rock. It's the second time the Lord's talked about this, making them like a top of a rock. Thou shalt be a place to spread nets. It's the second time he's talked about that. Thou shalt be a place to spread nets upon. Thou shalt be built no more, for I, the Lord, have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Now, the detail in which God prophe God's prophecies have been fulfilled over the centuries uh, will become it becomes apparent to us when you take a look at what actually happened during history, and it just brings to mind what uh, what the Lord has t told I I Isaiah in Isaiah 46 verses 9 through 13 when he's he said, "Remember the former things of old, for I am God." And he talks about how he, how he declares the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Now, 
history shows that Nebuchadnezzar did attack Tyre just as the Lord said he would. In fact, the Babylonians went to work against Tyre ten years after the Assyrians had attacked Tyre. They were the first wave was actually came from the Assyrians. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar came to Tyre and besieged it in 585 BC, which was one year after Jerusalem fell. Think about it. They, one year earlier, they had been rejoicing at the fall of Israel and them be carried away into captivity. One year later, one year after Jerusalem fell, and shortly after Tyre had mocked Jerusalem and rejoiced at her fall, uh, here comes Nebuchadnezzar after them. Now, understand that the city was practically invincible that they, where they were at. Uh, in fact, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's siege lasted for 13 years until Tyre was finally destroyed in 572 B.C. Think about 13 years siege. It's a long time. I mean, I've been here 16 years. You think about 13 of those. Um, but when Nebuchadnezzar broke into the city, he found out that uh, most of the inhabitants had fled to an island about a half mile away. They had gotten away with almost all of their riches and had built a new city. And Nebuchadnezzar was forced to give up because he had no fleet. And, and Ezekiel 26 verses 7 through 11 was fulfilled through Nebuchadnezzar's attack. But further prophecies in Ezekiel 26 verse 12 and 4 were not fulfilled at that time. Understand that the Babylonian warriors had had given 13 years of military service and they hardly had any pay to show for it. And that's, that's actually described in Ezekiel 29. Look at Ezekiel 29, verse 17 through 20. Ezekiel 29, verse 17. And it came to pass in the seventh and twentieth year and in the first month and the first day of the month the, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. Every head was made bald and every shoulder was peeled, yet, yet he had no wages nor his army for Tyrus for the service that he had served against it. And uh, so it, it says there also, uh, look at uh, verse number 19, it says, uh, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he shall take her multitude and take her spoil and take her prey and it shall be the wages for his army. For I, for I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor wherewith he served against it because they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. So again, the Lord says that Nebuchadnezzar was doing his bidding. Okay, And God made sure that even though they weren't didn't have the spoils that they were expecting there, that, uh, they, they, that they were paid. Now, History also shows that the Greeks became executors of God's judgment. Uh, judgment came upon Tyre continuously. Uh, in fact, we read there in Ezekiel 26 and verse 3, uh, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, uh, O Tyrus, and will cause many nations to come up against thee as the sea causes his waves to come up. So Tyre was finally destroyed and the word of God uh, fulfilled, um, but it took a while for it to take place, 250 years actually. The Persians came in 539 B.C. after the, after the uh, Chaldeans, Persians came, and they conquered. Uh, after they conquered the Babylonian Empire, they became the the uh, uh, the the ones that were in charge. Okay, they, that was the new empire, and they also in that in conquering the Babylonian Empire, they conquered Tyre. Now, a king of Cyprus fought against the new city of Tyre. Remember, they had they had just moved to an island a little bit ways down the road, and they, uh, 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 they, they set up a city there. Well, a uh, king of Cyprus fought against the new city, 
Alexander the Great finally came from Greece in 332 B.C., and he fulfilled the still outstanding prophecy of God almost 250 years after Nebuchadnezzar. I want you to think about 250 years. Our nation has just turned 248 uh, this past week. 248. We hadn't even reached the 250 mark. But 250 years, that's, that's a long time, isn't it? It took that long. And, and in order to conquer Tyre, Alexander built a dam or causeway from the mainland. It was a half mile long, that's from here to the red light down at the end of the road, and it's 65 yards wide, and it was up to 220 yards deep in places. And for the causeway, uh, this this is uh, shows how the scripture uh, is fulfilled. Alexander the Great used the remains of the old city such as the walls, the stones, the wood, the earth, the debris, and even the dust, fulfilling Ezekiel 26, verse 12, and verse 14. History tells us that uh, Alexander the Great conquered Tyre <coughs> after seven months. 30,000 people were sold as slaves. 2,000 men were crucified, and 8,000 others were were killed. Now, understand the Word of God is always fulfilled. It may take some time. Uh, God's not in any hurry. Time don't mean anything to the Lord. It just really doesn't. <coughs> but He's, he's going to fulfill what He says He's going to fulfill. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... The pronouns, uh, we, I, I pointed out a while ago, the, the pronouns he and his in, in Ezekiel 26, verses 7 through 11, refer to Nebuchadnezzar. But in Ezekiel 26, 12, the pronouns change to they, and that refers to the Greeks. Uh, and, and there's some separation of time there. But we can only stand amazed at the precision of God's word. God's prophecies were literally fulfilled. Ancient Tyre had become, like the Lord said twice, had become a bare rock, a bare rock, and was never rebuilt. Actually, ancient Tyre is hardly even identifiable by the archaeologists. Um, they, know, they know Tyre is real from the writings of the, the, the nations that came against them. But Tyre, uh, it, look at uh, Ezekiel 26, and verse number 21, <clears throat> Ezekiel 26, verse 21, you get, get the right place here. I will make thee a terror, and thou shalt be no more. Though thou be sought for, yet shalt thou never be found again, saith the Lord God. Now, the surrounding nations were so shocked by what the Greeks did to Tyre that they voluntarily surrendered to Alexander the Great. Think about that. Ezekiel 26, verse 18 says, Now shall the isles tremble in the day of thy fall. Yea, the isles that are in the sea shall be troubled at thy departure. They saw what happened to Tyre and they trembled because of it. However, we must note that Ezekiel's prophecy sounds like one continual prophecy, but that's the way prophecy is a lot of times. In fact, the, the, a lot of times what the prophet would see is he was uh, pinning the words or seeing what the Lord had for him. He would only see certain things. You know, he he uh, wouldn't see, see intervening times. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But there were various fulfillments <clears throat> Um, uh, that before the main fulfillment actually took place. And again, it was 250 years past between Nebuchadnezzar and Alexander the Great. And when, when Nebuchadnezzar departed, the people of Tyre might have thought that they got away with what they had done against Israel. Can you, can you imagine that? You know, oh, well, we, we skipped out on that. You know, the Lord's word wasn't fulfilled. Uh, they, they didn't see the Lord's word fulfilled, but 
the Lord wasn't done with him yet. Okay? And if you see a part of the Word of God that's yet to be fulfilled, well, the Lord's not done yet. Okay? We need to understand that. The Lord's not done. The Lord's prophecy had to be and eventually was fulfilled completely, only it took place in phases. It took place in the Lord's time, not in man's time. Isaiah 46.10, again, my, my counsel shall stand, says the Lord. I will do all my pleasure. So what do we take away from all of this? And why, why do you spend time taking a look at something like uh, Zechariah 9, the first four verses, and the, the things that we've seen, and Ezekiel? What, what are we to take away from this? What is the message for our day? Well, understand Tyre is a picture that can very easily apply to many of the nations of the end times, including our own. Yes. Even the free world is characterized by power, knowledge, and pride. And that, that pride goes against the Lord. That pride is of Satan, who is the prince of this world, and who is behind uh, all that we see that is going against Israel and uh, the people of God. Uh, it comes from Satan. Just as Satan developed his power within a willing uh, city of Tyre, <clears throat> he will develop his power in all the nations of the end times against the Lord's people Israel. I want us to observe four things and we'll be done, okay? First of all, end time judgments predicted by God will come upon the Gentile nations like waves. It's, it's going to come like waves. And again, I, I, I just point out Ezekiel 26.3 that we read. And where the Lord said it was going to come to, to them in waves. Listen to Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations. <laughs> is that going to take place? Yep. Lord's going to do it. Jesus described deception, wars, the rising of one nation against another, disease, famines, earthquakes as the beginning of sorrows in Matthew 24, verses 4 through 8. More and more, the nations have an increased hatred for Israel. It don't take a bright person to look at the news and understand that hatred. I mean, it's on there each and every day. Uh, in our land, a lot of what has happened in the uh, on the university campuses this past uh, spring and before graduation took place and all the way up and through graduation, uh, the anti-Israel protests, the anti-Zion movement there, uh, the pro-Palestinian, who was that geared against? Geared against God's people and God himself, really. Because uh, God, God is the one that ex exalted Israel to the place that they are in. And, uh, and when, you, when you come against Israel, you're coming against God. But we, we know that more, more and more the nations have an increasing hatred for Israel. There, there's an increase of lawlessness in our world. There's great distress at every turn. There is a great shaking of heaven and earth that appears to be leading up to the very threshold of the end time judgments of the tribulation period. All the hatred that we see going against Israel now, it's just building up. And can, can you see it uh, uh, just uh, blossoming? It, it just really is. The waves of judgment, though, will come upon this world with increasing severity. Luke 21, 25 applies in this connection. It says, and, and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So that's the first thing we take away. And the second thing is we should come to see that God is Lord through his judgments. He, that's the purpose. When, when the Lord brings judgment such as he does, it is for uh, folks to know, hey, I'm the Lord. Right now we live in a world that is full of little G-gods. Yes. Uh, 
and uh, those that are being exalted against the one true God, even. Look at verse, um, look at uh, chapter 26, verse 6 again. And her daughters which are in the field shall be slain by the sword, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And there, there, there came a time when Tyre knew, uh, yep, this, the, he, he is the Lord. It was too late for them at that point, but they saw that. Look at chapter 28. Chapter 28, verse number 23 and 24. <clears throat> Let's back up to verse 22. Uh, and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in, in, in the midst of thee, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall have executed judgments in her, and shall be sanctified in her. For I will send uh, into her pestilence and blood into her streets, and the the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side, and they notice they shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 24. And they shall be no more a pricking briar in, into the unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of of, of all that are round about them, that uh, that despise them. They shall know that I am the Lord. We have here just a short order. Three times the Lord said, you know, giving a purpose of His judgments, is that uh, the, these that He comes and brings judgment against could see that God is the Lord through the judgments He brings. God has brought cities, nations, and empires to their downfall throughout history in order to establish His testimony. Now, the Bible is historically accurate. Yes. It just is. And he has, he has had kings appointed and dethroned. Uh, think of Pharaoh. He, he, he told Moses, tell Pharaoh, I raised you up for my purposes. You know? <laughs> and Nebuchadnezzar was raised up uh, for his purposes. Cyrus in Persia was called by name before he was ever even born. The Lord taught, said how he's going to use Cyrus. Even Gog from the land of Magog will be led by God to the mountains of Israel in order to be destroyed. It's just like they're going to have hooks in their nose bringing them to that area, bringing them to destruction. But they will be doing that willingly. All this is so that the world will realize that there is but one God. He is the Lord God, Jehovah of the Bible. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10 says, I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. The things that are not yet done are going to be done. Amen. You can count on it. A third thing we take away. <clears throat> the Lord God of Israel does not allow his people to perish. They, they're going to come out of this. They are. After, after God ended his message of judgment to Syria, Tyre and the Philistines in, in Zechariah chapter 9, we, we read that, uh, of Israel. Look at what we read in, in Zechariah 9, verse number 14. Look at Zechariah 9, verse 14 through 17. And the Lord sh shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. You want to know uh, about uh, the Lord and whirlwinds, read the book of Nahum, <laughs> chapter number 1. He has his way in the whirlwinds. Amen. Uh, verse 15, the Lord of hosts shall defend them. And talking about Israel. And they shall devour and subdue with slain stones. And they shall drink and make a noise. As through wine, they shall be filled like bowls, and they shall, and, and as corners of the altar. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty, corn 
shall make the young men cheerful and new wine with the maids. The Lord is going to be exalted, amen. And he's going to be he's going to do that through what he's going to do with Israel and through the nations that come against Israel. We know that Satan will release his rage in a flood of waves against the Jewish people in the end times. We read about that in Revelation 12, verse 15 and onward in the, in regarding the tribulation. And he and those he works in want to exterminate Israel. I mean, they, they even say it with their mouth in the, in the day and time that we, we live in. They, their goal is to eradicate every Israelite, every Jew they want dead. They don't want any. It's not just the nation. They want all the Jews gone. It's what they want. He, Satan, works in, in those born, in, in, he, wants to exter, he wants to exterminate Israel because Israel is God's holy testimony on earth. But he and they will never achieve this. If, if they could wipe out Israel, can you just close the Bible, get rid, of, get rid of it? The Bible's not true and God's not true. But people have tried to exterminate Israel and, and uh, down through the centuries, not been able to do it. Here's the last thing, fourth thing. Every, every person should surrender his or her rebellious heart to God's offer of salvation. Listen, God says, come to me and be saved or you know, you're going to face judgment. What are you going to do with that? Yeah? You're going to go against that? Or are you going to uh, uh, go go with it and and uh, uh, hearken to the Lord? Listen to Isaiah 46, verse 12 and 13. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. God, God did bring his righteousness near when he sent his son Jesus Christ into the world. To, to, to give so that we might have righteousness, give his life there on the cross of Calvary. He said, I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off. My, my, my salvation shall not tarry. Uh, you, you want salvation? The Lord will save you. you know? God tells us to whom we should listen and where our safety lies in these troubled times. He says, hearken unto me. And we need to keep our ear uh, to the Lord, keep our keep our nose in the book. Amen. The Word of God, no, know uh, what the Lord is doing. He also tells us where where we stand by nature. Uh, you know, we, by nature we were far from His righteousness. He's, he's talking to me. Hearken unto me, ye that are far from righteousness. And before we had Christ in our life, we were the far from righteousness. The Lord doesn't leave us where we are. He tells us that he has done everything so that, that we do not have to remain as we are. He said, I will, I will bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off. And we know that he did that by the redeeming death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And those who grasp this by faith will experience his salvation. Uh, his salvation never comes too late. <clears throat> Uh, it's there right on time when you need it, but you got to grasp it. The, the people of Tyre had stubborn hearts where God was concerned, and they felt safe. They thought they had everything they needed, and they were proud and arrogant. And Satan dwelt within the walls of Tyre, had his way with the city inhabitants. And the people of the city were deceived into a false sense of security, the same way that a lot of people today are in a false sense of security. Oh, Nothing gonna happen to me, you know. I am I am the, the ruler of my life. I determine what I'm gonna do. They thought they didn't need God, and only thought of an increase in material things of this life, and Satan won their hearts and made them rebellious against the Lord God. Unfortunately, that's the case with many today. So many are being ruled by greed and selfishness and pride and living only for self. Those who do not surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, though, we know the end. They will perish. Only two possibilities where life is concerned. They can be like Daniel. In fact, uh, I want to I look at this. Uh, 
really the Lord is speaking tongue in cheek here. Um, at Ezekiel 28, Ezekiel 28, and verse number, uh, let's look at verse number 2, uh, 2 through 4 here. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet, yet thou, thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. And then he, he's, here's the tongue in cheek right here. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee. <laughs> with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches. In other words, it said, you know, cast off Daniel's wisdom. I'll, I'll stick with my wisdom. My wisdom got me riches and got me gold and silver and treasures. Uh, that's what he says there. Mankind can put themselves at the disposal of the true God of heaven and earth. And things go well. Or they can serve the God of this world and things not go well. I mean, it may go well for a while, but the end result uh, is just like Tyre. Amen? Make sure that you make the right choices as, is, is a lesson that needs to be learned there to, uh, for the nations. Amen? The nations need to take heed. Uh, learn from the lesson of Tyre. Don't, watch how you, watch how you tr treat Israel. And watch that pride that's in your life. Well, let's pray. 